And so I want you to sit in what it would feel like if you know you could do events and do them profitably. I get goosebumps just thinking about it because with a profitable event, you also elevate your brand's positioning in the marketplace and finally have that answer to the question about how you're going to scale, right? And so if that's the goal, using events to scale and doing them profitably, then let's get to the starting line, shall we? If you want a profitable event, the starting line is breaking even. And so to help you get there, there are three important steps that you have to take. We're going to go through them today. Are you excited to have some fun with the numbers? (laughs) I'm excited. (laughs) Uh, Yes, quirky. You can describe me as that. But I do really get excited about the money stuff. Because with careful attention, you can land where you want to land. Inquiring minds want to know, how are entrepreneurs like us daring bravely to build a stage, ditch the sweatpants, and step up to the mic? How do we create our own transformative events so we can get our message out into the world in a bigger way that's not only profitable, but it's actually something we can be proud of? That's the question. And the answers are inside this podcast. My name is Sarah Faefer. Welcome to Green Room Central. Hey, it's Sarah. I have an invitation for you right now. You can join entrepreneurs from across the globe who share a passion for hosting their own events. Become part of the community that inspires and cheers you on over at greenroomcentral.com. I want you to imagine what it's going to feel like to lead your very own profitable live event, one that you feel confident and competent to lead year after year. It's, it feels like something that's scalable. It feels like something that's repeatable. It allows you to go deeper with your community than you can digitally in your online programs, courses, memberships. It's exciting stuff. You get to see firsthand, standing in front of the room, of your raving fans, you get to see firsthand the impact of your service. It's going to be an experience that causes you to fall in love with what you do all over again. And it's profitable. That's the the, the word we're underlining here today is profitability. And so I want you to sit in what it would feel like if you know you could do events and do them profitably. I get goosebumps just thinking about it because With a profitable event, you also elevate your brand's positioning in the marketplace and finally have that answer to the question about how you're going to scale, right? And so if that's the goal, using events to scale and doing them profitably, then let's get to the starting line, shall we? If you want a profitable event, the starting line is breaking even. And so to help you get there, there are three important steps that you have to take. We're going to go through them today. And here's what's awesome. Once you have all of the details, which I'm going to share with you right now, you're going to find that they're pretty easy steps to take. All right, write this down. Step one, price your event. Step two, monetize your event. And step three, find your break even point. And before you say, Sarah, (laughs) I don't even know what that means. Don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through it. Because today we are planning to win, not expecting to fail. Money is a hot button issue for me. And I want to see you succeed in this area. And so it's just going to take some strategic leadership on your part to kind of help guide your team to make note of what they need to make note of, track what they need to track, spend, save in certain areas. It's all totally doable. But, and once you see what I'm going to teach you here today, you're going to be able to go tell your team, give them the marching orders so that they can ensure that your vision turns out profitably. And I want that for you. 
So let's dive into step one, price your event. The way I like to step into pricing an event is to start with a list of expense categories in front of me. I like to have a guide that can pretty much covers any scenario I can throw at it. It's basically like having a questionnaire and once you've checked off all the boxes, you know that you're good to go. And me personally, I use the same list every single event because the cool thing is when you use the same categories in the same order, every single event that you do, it makes it super easy to compare event over event. Are you tracking with me? So then I go down the list one by one and I get estimates for each expense category. That's where budgeting starts for an event. It really is as simple as that. And so I'm going to list off the expense categories that I think you need. If you want a print printed guide of this, just go to sarahfafer.com slash profitable. And it'll be, it'll be there for you in writing uh, if you don't have a notebook candy. But if you do, I'm going to list them all off here. You can, you can jot them down. So before I give them to you, I'm I'm going to share that I'm going to give them to you in two buckets. First is fixed expenses. So those are expenses that stay the same regardless of how many guests you add. It's kind of like, for example, your house. You have either a mortgage or a rent. It's going to stay the same every month, no matter how many people you have come over for a party, right? But food changes. If one month you don't have any guests, <laughs> it's just you and your family, groceries gonna be pretty much the same month over month. But if, if the next month you throw a huge party uh, for 50 of your closest family and friends, it, your grocery bill is gonna be a, a wee bit higher, right? And, and that's the same with your event. You're gonna have fixed expenses that are gonna be re- the, stay the same regardless of how many guests you add. Maybe they'll flex a little bit, but they won't have that one-to-one variability that's asso- associated with with variable expenses, which will change based on your guest count. And by that, I mean each incremental guest that you add is equal to an additional expense. And I think you're going to love having your expenses divided into these two blocks, fixed and variable, because when we get to figuring out your break even point, it's gonna be super valuable to have them separate. All right, so fixed expenses. This is stuff, like this is the time when you're gonna get out your notebook and pen, okay? <laughs> fixed expenses are things like audiovisual, uh, creative services, decor and rentals, entertainment, event insurance, gifts, gratuities, guest speakers, internet, marketing, office supplies, photography, a pop-up shop, power, production, rigging, security, shipping and receiving, space rental, staff expenses, videography, and just, I always like to throw in a miscellaneous fixed category for the random stuff (laughs) that changes every single event. Like maybe you want to ride in on a steer. Well, the rental of said steer and handler is going to be a fixed expense. It doesn't matter if you ride in on that steer in front of 100 people or 1,000 people. The cost is the same. (laughs) All right, so now let's go over to variable expenses. Air travel, food and beverage, gifts, ground transportation, printing, registration materials, sleeping rooms, and miscellaneous variable. So that's variable and that's fixed. Your action step, write this down, is to go through the the list that we just went through and assign a number to each category. And by, by you, I mean assign it to somebody on your team. Okay, I want somebody on your team responsible for the money stuff and to be checking back in with you at least, at minimum, weekly with an update of exactly where you stand in all these categories, okay? So it's okay if the number is zero in one of these categories, but at at least give each category some thought. Your first, first go around, the first time that you do this for an event, it's gonna take a lot of online searches, a lot of emailing vendors, a lot of calling around to friends or vendors to get quotes, but 
once you have a number of each from each for for each category, you're going to get a sense of relief because you now have that information. You have you now have awareness and it's such a beautiful thing. Yes, for awareness and also please be proud of yourself and like put this in the win category for the week and be so glad that you did it. The icing on the cake is that after you do this exercise for one event, it will be like riding a bike every event after that. And it'll be so much easier and quicker. So just rip the rip the band-aid off, do it the one time. It'll be hard. It'll take time. But it'll pay off because every time after that, you'll just be so much better. And at your estimates, you'll be so much faster at creating it. All right. So I want to give you a couple tips about pricing things, okay? Allow your mind to wander a little bit on the budget implications of what you're attempting to do. I want you to make sure you capture all the costs associated with all those great ideas that you have for your event, okay? Second, I want you to bid everything out for your first event. And then going forward, you only have to bid out the items where you're not yet in love with your vendor or your supplier. Third, I want you to be aware and account for fees because they add up. Things like taxes, things like service fees. It's, it's just, it's something that you need to be aware of and keep track of because they can get high. So those are what you I want you to keep track of as pricing tips as you're pricing out all of those categories. So now we're going to move into monetizing your event. Step two. So when you're aware of your expenses, which is what we just did in step one, you'll be able to be in a really great place to know how much revenue you need to to bring in in order to break even and how much revenue you need to bring in to get to your ideal point beyond break even. Because let's be real here. We can call it revenue or monetization or underwriting or call it whatever you will. Someone's going to need to write the checks (laughs) for this beautiful idea that you have to host your own event. And so who or what is it? Is it your business? Is it t- ticket sales? Is it sponsor- sponsorships? Is it anticipated in event sales? So I've got a bunch of options for you for monetizing your event. Again, I'm going to go through them here. You can write them down or just go to sarahfafer.com slash profitable and you can grab a copy of the guide that has a list, this list on it, all right? I'm gonna list them for you in order because I, I think there are things that you can do to make money before, during, and after your event. And I want you to make this list. I want you to circle the ones that feel right to you. And then together in step three, we're gonna do the math to figure out your break-even point. And you're gonna love this. Like, do not stop here because the the money stuff like, brings up chest tightening or anxiety. Because I promise you, it's just a lack of awareness. And once we get through this exercise, you're going to feel this wave of confidence and excitement because you're doing it. Before, you've got ticket sales, VIP sales, live stream sales, and joint venture partnerships. All of those are options for monetizing before your event. I know there's plenty more, but that'll get you started. During your event, swag sales, making offers, joint venture partner offers, exhibitors and sponsors. And then after your event, you can make offers. You can have your sales team call your guests. You can sell recording packages. You can feel confident that your event probably built some relationships that are going to pay off down the road. There's going to be strategic byproducts that you just can't even account for now, but they're going to happen, right? Because you're going to make this amazing experience. It's going to build tons of goodwill and no like and trust between you and your guests and your brand. So that's just a list to get you started, to get the juices flowing. I know you and your team are going to be able to brainstorm together and come up with so many more 
and and make sure you're only doing the ones that feel true to you and your brand. Okay, that's super important here. Don't just add in a monetization strategy because you saw somebody else doing it. It needs to feel like it's a fit in your business with the strategy that you already have in play for the year, okay? Now, before we move on to finding your break-even point, I have a few monetization tips, all right? There's gonna be three of them. First, I want you to get your marketing right. Be intentional about your pre-event marketing campaign. Put as much time and energy into it as you would a product launch. Second, I want you to plan for more revenue to come in than you need. Cover yourself, it's as simple as that. Third, I want you to create multiple revenue streams. You'll be wise to plan to bring in money in multiple ways to cover yourself. All right, are you excited? (laughs) Is this feeling like something that you can do? All right, excellent. So step three, I want you to find your break-even point. So we're going to do some math together to figure out where your break-even point is. Because once you have that break-even point, you're going to be so well positioned to move the money-making levers so that you can make a profit on your live, virtual, in-person, or hybrid event. So how does that sound? Are you excited to have some fun with the numbers? (laughs) I'm excited. (laughs) Uh, Yes, quirky you can describe me as that, but I do really get excited about the money stuff because with careful attention, you can land where you want to land. Okay, let's dive in. There's two ways that you can calculate your break-even point. The first helps you arrive at the number of guests that you need to break even. And then the second helps you arrive at the registration fee or the ticket price that you need to break even. So all of this math is written out for you if you don't already have the guide, just go to sarahfafer.com slash profitable or take notes as I talk here. So let's dive into number one. You're gonna need, this is, this is where you need to figure out the number of guests to break even. So this is option one. You're gonna need three things. You're gonna need your fixed costs. You're gonna need your total variable cost per guest. And you're gonna need the registration fee or the ticket price. So you're gonna take your fixed costs, you're gonna divide it by your registration revenue, and you get the number of guests that you need to break even. Pretty easy and simple, right? So now let's move to the the second option. That's where you figure out the, the registration fee that you need to charge to break even. And so use this model if you prefer to break even or make money strictly on the ticket price of your event alone. Okay, so again, you're going to need three things. You're going to need your fixed costs. You're going to need the variable cost per guest. And then you're going to need the number of guests that you're confident will attend. And then you just take your fixed costs and you add your variable costs and you divide that number by the number of guests and you get the ticket price that you need to charge to break even. It's crazy simple, right? I really want you to see how creating a profitable event is possible for your business. I want you to play with the numbers. I want you to come up with a few scenarios where you're breaking even or even making money. I want you to feel out what feels right for your business and for your community. You could adjust the guest count. You could raise or lower lower the registration fee. You can play with adding sponsorships or even reducing fixed expenses. The options are endless. That's what I want you to know. But know that you have a lot of dials that you can turn. It's just, this is information. It shouldn't make your chest tighten. (laughs) Information helps us make decisions. And now you know how you're going to be able to make them. So before we wrap up, I have a few break even tips for you. There's three of them, write these down. First, do the work. Do the work to find the expense and the revenue model that is best for you and your business. But whatever you do, second thing is I want you to be realistic. 
wishing and hoping and burying your head in the sand will not serve you in this exercise. And then third, if you're feeling like you want to sell a higher priced event, then build the content and the marketing to support that price. Build the marketing to communicate the value of the event. But know that you can also start small at a 12 person retreat for a few hundred dollars. Or shoot, you could probably even swing open the front door of your own home for even less money, right? I hope this helped you today. I hope this conversation about money didn't get you anxious. It got you excited. Know that you can always pop into my DMs with a question on Instagram, or you can pop into Lynchpin Nation. It's there for you 24-7 as a, a place for you to drop questions in to support others who are also on this same journey. Just go to lynchpinnation.com and it's a free community you can join and I'm always in there getting answers for you and cheering you on make it an outstanding event make it a profitable you got this thank you for listening to this episode of the green room central podcast if you love this episode about events and money then please take a screenshot on your phone and post it to instagram be sure to tag at sarah faber that's me (laughs) and let me know why you liked it and what you'd like to hear or who you'd like to hear from in the future. That'll help me know what to create for you. Also, if scaling your business using events sounds like something you want to tackle in 2022 and you need a coach, let's connect to see if one-on-one coaching is for you. Just go to greenroomcentral.com. You and I can work together one-on-one throughout the course of the year and dive deep into the inner workings of your events and business. You'll receive mentorship, personalized feedback, and customized guidance to define your goals and achieve your next level of success. Go to greenroomcentral.com right now to apply. On average, I spend about an hour a day reading every month of every year. If you love learning on the go as much as I do, go to greenroomcentral.com to get a free audiobook and a free 30-day trial of Audible, my audiobook platform of choice and a sponsor of Green Room Central. You could grab a copy of one of my favorites, High Performance Habits by Brenda Richard. Perhaps give that one a try. I appreciate your commitment to leveling up and learning the mindset and strategy of live events. Keep going. Keep learning. If you want more, head over to greenroomcentral.com for show notes and all the links from today's episode.